Wally, on ballots this fall uh, in November, folks in Las Cruces, the city itself, so not outside the city in other areas of the county, but in the city of Las Cruces, there will be a massive tax increase on the ballot for voters to consider. Uh, This is a 0.5625% increase to uh, the Las Cruces gross receipts tax. The current rate overall, uh, including the state and other local uh, rates, is 8.0625%. This would take the city to 8.625%. Currently, Albuquerque's GRT is 7.625, Santa Fe's 8.1875, and Rio Rancho 7.625. Four three seven five. Those are way too many numbers. I realize that. Um, I hate the fact that our GRT gets taken out to uh, four decimal places in many cases. It's just not good. It doesn't help business in general. Uh, but this is a major tax increase already. Las Cruces has a higher rate than Albuquerque and Rio Rancho, two of the other major cities in our state. Uh, if it passes, this would be well above Santa Fe's rate as well. And For folks in Las Cruces, it would take uh, the rate well above the El Paso sales tax rate. They have a sales tax, not a gross receipts tax in Texas. That rate is 8.25. So you'd be taking the GRT in Las Cruces and jacking it up uh, nearly half a cent beyond what even El Paso charges for its uh, sales tax. And of course, we know that they have no personal income tax. Uh, Last thing is that Currently, Las Cruces, as a component of that rate, takes 1.5625. The state's rate is 5%. The county is 1.5. This means it's a 36% tax increase if you focus only on the city component, which I think is relevant information. So uh, setting all that up, uh, this is something that we're clearly concerned about at the Rio Grande Foundation. And... uh, we'll be engaging with, but I wanted to do a brief special episode to address the GRT in Las Cruces and the plans to raise it. Yeah. You know, Paul, if I have advice for the uh, citizens of Las Cruces is don't fall for it. And uh, why is that is that, you know, first of all, the gross receipts tax is a very damaging tax. It, uh, and the difference between it and the sales tax is it taxes services as well as service-oriented business inputs. And, you know, when it's 8%, you know, it's uh, another way of looking at it is if I go to a CPA in Las Cruces and get them to do my work, uh, they'll charge me this 8% gross receipts tax. But if I uh, call up somebody in Texas, a Texas CPA, and we do our business over the phone and the internet, the price can be 8% less. That's one of the big things. You say, well, that's just these businesses. But guess what? That's what creates an economy is a business. And that's just one of the aspects of the gross receipts tax being so bad. And then the second one I would say is, yeah, this increase, you know, there, there's a base that goes to the state, the county, whatever, but mm-hmm. all of this is going to the city. So this reminds me a little bit of, uh, you know, the uh, federal government uh, when they threatened to uh, reduce the budget of the park service, for example. They always say, we're going to shut down the, the Washington Monument or the Statue of Liberty to very... Uh, very apparent, high-profile things. We're not going to cut out any, uh, any, in, you know, what would we say, inefficiencies in the system. And by saying this is for, you know, this is for public safety and this will help with homelessness or whatever, I think they're, uh, they're basically, what about the money that you've already gotten going towards that? Let's talk about that. Are there any inefficiencies and then finally, uh, there's our friend Arthur Laffer and the Laffer Curve. It's like always when you raise the rate of a tax, you don't always get as much money as you think because people adjust their affairs. And guess what? You have Texas and you have El Paso right down the road, and you can just go down there and get more and more services uh, and less and less in Las Cruces. So I think this, uh, you know, it's building 
it's adding insult to injury on top of a bad system, and I, I just think this is not a good idea. Yeah, um, it is being touted as a tax increase for public safety and some other uh, apparent construction projects uh, around the city infrastructure type stuff. I don't know what those exactly mean, uh, especially given the fact that uh, we have a state that has a $3.5 billion surplus seemingly every year. I see no reason that we're going to deviate dramatically from that amount to the extent that there is uh, money that needs to be spent in the city of Las Cruces for core functions. They have uh, a large legislative delegation. They're Democrats by and large, so they should be able to get capital outlay dollars and other funds appropriated through the state. It's not that New, like New Mexico is one of these states that's extra shy about uh, state money flowing for for local uh, benefit. We, we do that kind of thing all the time. Uh, and the money is clearly there for it. And their delegation should be able to bring some of that uh, so-called bacon home. Uh, that So that's one thing. And just the idea that crime is really a resource-driven issue. If government has a role, and you know, I think we qualify as fairly libertarian-minded folks here, uh, Wally, if government has a single role, even many, most libertarians will agree, uh, the most hardcore, some of them will say, oh, you know, we should do private police forces. Well, I'm in that big government libertarian group that believes that government should be involved in crime. They don't do a very good job of it. I think we've seen that in spades over the years in New Mexico, uh, Albuquerque as well, Las Cruces apparently as uh, also, but it's not because the resources aren't there uh, in the government. Maybe they don't dedicate the resources to fighting crime. More importantly, they also are unwilling because they're progressive uh, values, so to speak, to actually deal with crime in the ways that it needs to be addressed. Uh, so I think maybe a philosophical change as opposed to, oh, we need more money, because I wouldn't trust uh, anybody who told me that we couldn't do anything about crime unless they had a much bigger budget. I just think that's ridiculous. Yeah, you know, we're, Paul, we're getting, uh, at the rate we're going, we're going to get to the same place with crime that we got, we've got. we gotten to as a state on education, which is towards the top when it comes to spending and towards the bottom when it comes to effectiveness. And so uh, this is, uh, this is the, the game Las Cruces is trying to play. The other thing that people don't talk about uh, much, and it's interesting how uh, the progressives, they love, they love the income tax because it's always tax the rich, tax the rich, and uh, the poor don't pay income tax. In fact, with the earned income tax credit, you actually pay negative income taxes a lot of times. But man, the uh, gross receipts tax, because it's so pervasive in New Mexico, no, it's not on food, but you pay for it almost everywhere else, in restaurants, the clothes you buy. And let's face it, uh, why is it regressive? Is because the, the poorer you are, the higher percentage of your income is spent on things that are subject to the gross receipts tax. And so uh, are they really going to make things worse for the poor, create more of them, uh, so on and so forth? Uh, the answer is uh, probably, but... Uh, for sure, the people that proposed this uh, didn't seem to care about this, and we'll see if the citizens of Las Cruces can kind of read between the lines and see uh, whether this they think at the end of the day this is a good idea or not. Yeah, um, it is a regressive tax, so it does impact the poor, which uh, you know I had in my initial kind of social media interactions some people even from groups called with progress in their names who were saying, oh, you know, this tax increase isn't a big deal. It's not going to harm people, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, well, uh, those are the so-called progressive activists. Uh, they probably aren't actually paying the tax. They're not uh, really uh, 
in the boat of people who are going to be negatively impacted by this tax. And lest you think that it doesn't have real world impacts, I will remind folks of just 2023 when suddenly, for some good reasons, everybody in Santa Fe, including the governor, had their hair on fire. Eventually, it took time, but eventually they had their hair on fire because they were dealing with a medical provider shortage and some of the self-inflicted policies relating to that. First and foremost was the a medical malpractice issue, which obviously this has nothing to deal with. But one of the bigger, most significant reforms that happened during that 2023 session relating to medical providers was to eliminate the gross receipts tax on deductibles and co-pays to those doctors. So even though, unfortunately, New Mexico's dominant political uh, party, dominant political forces have not really engaged and wrestled with the idea of gross receipts tax reform, even with these massive budget surpluses in place, they saw fit to uh, eliminate the gross receipts tax on a chosen sector of the economy that they knew was being negatively impacted. So uh, just apply that to all small businesses. You can apply it to your accountant, bookkeeper, buying advertising in your local newspaper or on your local radio station. Uh, your web website developer, web developer, website maintenance. Podcast producer. Yes. Uh, all manner of things that are taxed here in New Mexico under the gross receipts tax and taxed in Las Cruces that will not be taxed in El Paso and will fundamentally make you further uh, less attractive uh, as a destination for people, jobs, businesses, et cetera, relative to not just El Paso, but other cities in Texas, other places in Arizona. And, you know, this is a global economy, so it really affects everything in Las Cruces. So, um, And this, this next one, Paul, is a bit of a distraction from the big picture, which is taxation of services. But it is interesting, as you say, you know, when, when – uh, the medical field was suffering. They actually did something. Oh, maybe giving them a, a break on gross receipts tax could help. We have the uh, back to school gross receipts tax holiday on school supplies and various things. And uh, I don't know, other than Black Friday sales at Walmart, that seems like a big deal here in New Mexico. And if this isn't important uh, to the taxpayers of New Mexico, if 7 8% of uh, on things that you buy are not important. Why is that such a big deal? And why do we even have that? It's like, oh, it's just a, another 7 8%. Uh, nothing to see here. Just move along. So a bit of inconsistency with that one as well. Absolutely. Well, uh, we'll conclude the conversation right there.